Let's talk about phytoceramides and ceramides in general. <clears throat> Great. Yeah. Oh. So you want me to ask questions or are you ready to go? <laughs> Either way. <laughs> Just start talking. <laughs> so we're born, they say we're born with uh, 60% ceramides in the outer layers of the skin. And, and from other things I'm reading lately, I, it seems that that may be what they're, maybe what they're quoting is that 60% of the fats, 60% of the oil content of the skin when we're born is ceramides. Uh, that that's most likely what that that number comes from, uh, and then that can drop even below twenty percent uh, as we age because the body makes less ceramides as our metabolism slows, and ceramides are not only used in the skin; they're used in every cell in the body. They they form little rafts, like cholesterol will form rafts in the in the cell membrane. Ceramides also will form rafts in the cell membrane. They're in, uh, when they're used in the nervous system, the body attaches sugar molecules to the ceramides, and, and then that, I am guessing, has some communication function. We know that ceramides on the cell membrane have a communication function, uh, and then the specialization with a little antenna on the outside just, just <laughs> begs to be... Uh, used for as an antenna for communication on, uh, in a nerve cell. The, the ceramides are involved in the, the myelin sheath that uh, insulates the uh, nerves, nerve cells in the central, some of the nerve cells. So in that the could be helpful for system. MS. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so there's many other functions. We're gonna be learning more about ceramides. We have lots of questions, again, like whether it can help as a treatment uh, and prevention and reversal for cataracts and, and uh, dry eye syndrome. Uh, so interested to find out if uh, people are, there's already been some observations with dry eye that, that people taking ceramides as a supplement, you know, increasing the dietary intake, which the average, according to statistics, uh, the average American gets about 350 milligrams a day of, of ceramides, phytoceramides, or, or ceramides in general, I guess. Uh, and so when we take a 350 milligram capsule, uh, which is considered a full daily supplemental dose, then we're maybe doubling that. Uh, some people certainly are getting less. There's a lot of ceramides in, in dairy and eggs. Uh, obviously, you know, the animals, the, the chickens and the cows are eating vegetable matter and the phytoceramide form and, and you know, to some degree processing them. So whether they're still phyto or whether they're lacto ovo <laughs> ceramides uh, not sure but those are considered high high sources and then uh, sweet potatoes and rice and and wheat it's in the germ of the wheat and the rice so polished rice and white flour you're not going to get ceramides it's a, an oil it's a, a waxy oil so if only if you're getting the the rice bran oil or the the wheat germ oil then you're going to be getting ceramides phytoceramides um so yeah so, so um would you consider um uh, a ceramide to be a, a lipid I, I think we need to look that up and see okay. what the definitions are of you know you know fat soils lipids waxy oils ceramides you know what's what's mm -hmm. the structure and uh, phytoceramides are not a single compound it's a class it's a group Okay. You know, so there's more than one structure. There's different lengths, just like with other fatty acids, the lengths of the, the fatty acid chains. Uh, and, and, the, and the different lengths are going to be funct are functionally different. Uh, so, so there's a lot that we can potentially learn about ceramides and phytoceramides and how they interact with our health. Again, it's not going to be just the skin, although that's where we see dramatic changes in one to three months is the typical length of time that... Uh, We'll see increased hydration because it's a, a, a moisture barrier for the skin. The barrier function of the skin mm -hmm. keeps the moisture in. It also keeps invasive organisms out. Right. It keeps allergens out. It keeps toxins out. Uh, so it's a very important function. And I, I'm what wondering... What about injuries, too? Injuries and infections. Yeah, infection would be keeping, if it's keeping the, the bacteria out, the because the, there's normally strep and staph mm -hmm, is the normal skin right. flora. They're there. But if there's a moisture barrier, well, they, they're only going to live where there's moisture. They're not going to 
live inside a wax. Mm. Uh, and they're not going to invade through the phytoceramides. I'm just wondering if, if, if the body would heal quicker with the phytoceramide. Yeah, it heals and, and, thinking, uh, yeah. and is le less prone to damage and injury right. and invasion. Um, um, I'm just, the next the question that's coming up from what I'm reading here is about the acid mantle. Mm -hmm. how, how do phytoceramides uh, affect the acid well, mantle? Fatty acids are right, acidic. acidic. It's part, the, 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 the acid mantle is made up of a combination of of the, the the aqueous medium that's from the from the the uh, sweat glands mm -hmm. and which is similar to urine um, very similar mm -hmm. it's a acid, it's acidic mm -hmm. um, and <clears throat> the fatty acids the oils which are in the cells as and as the cells age they dehydrate and compress you get the squamous epithelial cells on the top you know very flattened mm -hmm. this you know largely the cell membrane is a big part of it mm -hmm. uh, and that's where the oils are that's where the ceramides are so that that doesn't evaporate that concentrates uh, so so uh, but then you have the sudoriferous i mean then you have the uh, the the uh, uh, the sweat glands are the sudoriferous glands, but you have the oil glands, the sebaceous, sebaceous glands. Sebaceous glands, right. So uh, the, uh, my guess, I have not read it specifically, we need to look it up on Google, and, and I'm sure it will tell us, um, that ceramides are likely secreted as well uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the, the sebaceous glands, the oil glands of the skin. It's an oil, and... And so that would be another way that the skin would add to that barrier function. And so Ray's uh, suggesting that we go ahead and do that. Yeah, I thought you might want to just look that up, and I'm going to continue to look at some other, come yeah. up with some questions. Yeah. So sebaceous and ceramides. Sebaceous ceramides. We'll look up and see what it says. The, the first... The first uh, reference is from NCBI, so this is National Institute of Health, so national government research source. Good, that, that's what and, we want to uh, see first. The second one is also from NCBI. Third one is from Nature, which is you know a leading conventional journal in, of science. Uh, and while it's loading, it, it, that one says dilutional effect of increased sebaceous gland activity on something. <laughs> sebaceous wax esters and epidermal ac acyl ceramides. So form of ceramides, acyl ceramides. Okay, now th this is loaded. And it's uh, saying dilutional, it's apparently the same, same study. Uh, dilutional effect of increased sebaceous gland activity on the proportion of linoleic acid in sebaceous wax esters and in epidermal acyl ceramides. So they're saying that if we're secreting more from the sebaceous glands, that that they're looking at does that how does that dilute the epidermal acyl ceramides, and how does it dilute linoleic acid, which they're probably looking at. That's that's going to be a, a more fluid medium, and the uh, acyl ceramides more. Uh, more of a, a, a barrier function. So s they say sebaceous wax esters and epidermal acyl ceramides were isolated from skin surface lipid obtained from children and from young adults. So these are young people now, not elderly that can have you know, maybe a third the level of ceramides in the skin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, fatty acid methyl esters were prepared from the esterified fatty acids of these lipid classes and analyzed to ascertain the proportions of methyl linoleate, which is uh, an 18 chain, they give the structure 18 carbon chain fatty acid, uh, and methyl sapionate, which is a 16 chain length. Do we want this to be on the camera? Um, what, me looking at the camera while I'm reading? No, I mean, uh, all this that you're reading is this... Oh, I'm just giving an example of, you know, if we want to learn more, then now we're, we're delving into, you know, 
the, the full on science research, you know, lots of terminology, lots of technical detail okay. and can be challenging to draw from that. Well, does that mean I should take this supplement or I shouldn't take this supplement? You know, the things that we want. <laughs> what should I have for breakfast? You know, should I eat eggs or not eat eggs? <laughs> it, it's not going to tell us that, but it can, you know, for those with more science background, can we can draw out information. I, and I haven't right. really gotten anything out of this one yet, but uh, just looking at the abstract, which is the summary. Okay. Uh, so we'll just, as an example, we'll go through and see if we do get something. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Right. Okay. Okay. So, uh, and this one is quite technical. Yes. So on, um, where are we, uh, so we have 18, but, but it's illustrative of what I was saying, that it's a class of compounds. It's not a single compound. It's not like, right. it's not like uh, DHA. Right, which is the number one fatty acid in the body, uh, especially in the brain, especially in, even more so, especially in the retina. But for all of our cells, when we eat omega-3 fatty acids, our body makes them into DHA. When we eat fish oil, nice. it's mostly EPA and some DHA. Mm -hmm. How, what does our body do? It takes the EPA and turns it into DHA. Where did it come from in the fish? It came from the fish eating algae, which have DHA. So. Huh. Our body is saying metabolically, yeah, we can eat fish. That's awesome. It's it's closer. It's got some of what we need and what isn't what we need. We can make into what we need. But if we were eating algae, now we're getting exactly what we need directly. We should be eating algae. Yeah. So we're going to be producing algae oils. Whole oh, that's al right. The whole algae, algae oils. oils right. For internal and external consumption because the skin absorbs 40% of what we put on it as well. Cool. Uh, so okay. that's that's coming. Yes, yes. Formulating and, and fantastic formulating. Yes, and and I would love to see wizard. us formulate while we're speaking of it for our notes. Mm -hmm. We can formulate phytoceramides into that Ooh. blend, and we can fight also mm -hmm. formulate uh, uh, phyto uh, uh, ster phytosterols, the cholesterol analogs oh. from plants <coughs> that have. Totally different function than cholesterol in the body. Cholesterol is an important function in the body. It's not the enemy. Uh, things that kill the enzymes that make cholesterol, that's worthy of enemy status because it's blocking a, a body function. Mm. But cholesterol is necessary for enzymes the cell membrane. Enzymes do what? Block cholesterol production in the liver. So, th in other words, that is a pharmaceutical approach hmm? using enzymes to block yeah. Yeah, cholesterol a toxin, production? A toxin approach. It's oh saying your body's doing the wrong thing. It's doing too much of something. We're going to damage your body so we can't do as much as that of, mm -hmm. of that mm -hmm. as it wants to under those circumstances. We're going to change the circumstances. We're in control. I'm a doctor. Don't worry. Give me your body. I'll fix it. <laughs> We're going to put some <laughs> toxins in it. You you won't me have those bad measurements that I'm measuring. <laughs> and you if may those feel worse. Don't you may not down. live as long. But yeah, right. <laughs> that's not my problem. I just work here. <laughs> I'm a drug salesman. Okay, uh, so on the same subjects, two measures of sebum secretion rate were obtained. So they're measuring these different uh, ceramides on the on the skin, and they're measuring yeah. how much <clears throat> oil is being secreted by the skin. Interesting. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Namely, the sustainable wax ester secretion rate on the forehead. So how much waxy ester is coming out of the forehead? Waxy esters are coming out of my forehead? Yes. Hi, Esther. <laughs> <laughs> I know Esther. Uh, two measures of sebum secretion rate were obtained. Okay, maybe that, that one on the forehead. And the ratio of wax esters to cholesterol and cholesterol esters in the surface li lipid. The proportions <sighs> of methyl linoleate in oh, fame, which is goodness. the fatty acid methyl esters, this is from the wax esters <laughs> esters decreased and the proportion <laughs> of the methyl oh sebaleate increased with increased rates of sebum secretion for so if you if you put out more oils the the content changes it's not just more it's a, a different ratio for both methyl mm, linoleate, linoleate okay. and methyl sebaleate a better correlation was obtained when the ratio of some of these other things. I'm not was transcribing used. all this. No, no, you're not transcribing this. <laughs> God. This is a demonstration. It was okay. used as a measure of sebum secretion rather than the WESR. The proportions of methyl linoleate and the fame from the acyl ceramides were also inversely related to the ratios of da da da. In acyl ceramides, 
Spinelliate was replaced by sapienate, a major fatty acid of human sebum. It appears, therefore, that... Now, here's their mm -hmm. conclusion. Maybe, uh, okay. maybe it'll be interesting. Maybe it won't. <laughs> okay. It appears, that, therefore, that sebum fatty acid composition may change with changes in sebaceous gland activity. Oh. So if the sebaceous gland is putting out oils, puts out more oils, it puts out different oils. Well, okay. You mean in Kinda different makes percentages? Sense. Yeah, different ratios. Ratios. There's different in content oh, in there. Okay. Right? Makes m makes intuitive sense, but we wouldn't have necessarily known that. We wouldn't have thought that. It's like okay, okay we learned something makes sense. new. If it's if it's working harder, it's putting out different stuff. Okay. And that sebum fatty acids can enter the epidermis and be incorporated into epidermal lipids. So they're saying that these oils put out by the sebaceous glands get incorporated into the skin and that's what I'm thinking that you know one of the routes for for the uh, uh, phytoceramides, phytoceramides to act on, to improve the barrier function is not just by forming part of the cell membrane of, of the, the deeper ep uh, epidermal cells and then working their way up through the layers of mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. cornum, uh, stratum cornutum, and, you right. know, all that. <laughs> uh, and eventually, you know, about a month later, being at the surface, but also the sebaceous glands have something to do with putting out oils on the top of the skin. So mm -hmm, we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're getting it from both sides. Hmm, that makes sense. Supporting, restoring okay. a barrier function. Cool. Very important to, to think about that because... Because now you know, in in a few cell layers deep in the skin, we may not remove so many oils with uh, a soap, but we're going to remove all the surface oils with that soap. And if those are the ones that are feeding and enhancing the barrier function at the surface, which is where the barrier is going to be greatest, the, where there's a minimum of of uh, of aqueous of water fluid content in that skin layer. That could be a crucial factor. So going to other cleansers, not soap, which, you know, the soaps are tend to move us toward cancerous zones. They're, 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 they remove the, uh, the acidity, which is part of the acid mantle protective layer uh, of the skin as well. Do you think that it could have to possibly help with weight loss if... More oil, more per if percentages of oils are coming out. Could adipose tissue release maybe release more when? Um, We'd have to ask Professor Google. Oh, right. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I'm just. I'm always thinking about that because I know so many people who want to lose weight. You say sweat, weight, loss, but it's probably going to be short-term fluid effect that will be mainly looked at. But but if it's the also sebaceous interesting. It's also interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'm not getting a response. Okay. From Professor Google. We should right move now. on then. The skin is composed of two main. Well, okay. So back here, we're talking about the protective function. Uh, the acid mantle we went over. Uh, what about the immune cells? Mm -hmm. How would phytoceramides? What do you think? What do you think They're about? They're part of the that? cell membrane and the immune cells. They're part of the communication, biocommunication so in the cell membrane. The immune, cell, the immune cells. Then it's I, I, I don't have enough data data to. I know uh, we're just kind of to speculating. Say, no, yeah, I don't have. Uh, okay. It, I just what I know is. All I know, and that's that they are an important functional part of the cell membrane of every cell, and that they are involved in, in communication functions across that cell membrane. That's in itself is, is, right. is a huge statement. So they're important for the function of those and health, health and function of the immune cells. We know that. We don't know beyond that. <laughs>